Hey guys, welcome back. New episode of Myth Busting. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Today's episode, um, I got a comment from someone. I thought it's an interesting comment, question. Uh, I think many of us have it. I had it and uh, now it's kind of gone. So I wanted to share the understanding I got and how I got rid of this question for myself. The question was, in one of the previous videos, I was saying you can't make it without the Guru. And then someone is telling me, oh, but Buddha made it on his own. So I wanted to share um, a little bit about what I know about Buddha's life and, and uh, my comment on this, on this question and response. Buddha had, of course, seeking. He, left, he, li he lived in riches. He had seeking and uh, he left everything and he started his uh, spiritual journey. He had many, many gurus. So that is the first thing. He, he hopped from guru to guru. Um, and Swamiji was saying, if you have a guru and you feel that your guru cannot raise you any further than where you are, then leaving the guru is fine. Basically, Buddha, he went to so many gurus. He got initiated into so many different paths and techniques. And he basically outperformed his gurus. He was better than his own teachers, his own gurus at whatever technique or practice he was engaging himself into. So naturally he kept moving higher and higher, meeting different gurus that were, were teaching him various things. And he used to master these things. And then, and then naturally his seeking was not fulfilled and he kept uh, going further and further because of that. So that is one of the main components that we need to, that even Swamiji said, that the only reason why you would leave a guru in completion is because your seeking cannot be fulfilled by that guru. So the experience of the guru, the space that the guru is established into is not big enough to fulfill the seeking of the disciple. If that is possible, then moving towards another guru is, um, is fine. So he went through so many gurus. I don't know how many, but many gurus. And, um, and at the end, the last guru he had, he also outperformed him, he left. And then he went uh, basically on his own because he couldn't find anybody who would have the right inner space to fulfill his questioning, to answer his questions or to fulfill his seeking. And then he went on his own. But when he went on his own, he was intense. See, one thing we have to remember is when you go through all this practice with so many gurus, his integrity and authenticity and responsibility and enriching got so high. He was such an authentic guy. He was so intense in what he's doing. So when you do all these practices for so many years, your nervous system gets intensely strong. And that is what is important. That is the only reason why you live the spiritual truth, even that what Swamiji is teaching, is to strengthen the nervous system so that you can withstand the energy of enlightenment and the intensity of enlightenment. So he built a very strong nervous system for himself. And at some point, no gurus were able to fulfill him. He moved on his own. He went through his own practice. He was eating like one grain of rice a day. Like to that extent, he was interested in making it happen. He was hardcore. Uh, nowadays, you don't have people like that. You know, people complain because they don't get exactly what they want, what they, what they think they deserve. If they don't get it, they go and through all these ups and downs and through all these moves. I mean, that kind of inner space cannot grasp enlightenment. It's just not possible. It's, 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 it's totally different frequency. Buddha was so intense. He went through this whole fasting and all that and he was about to die. And then somehow, you know, he went to the river and there's a story where he somehow realized his delusion and he just, he got enlightened. But no, actually he went to the river, he had an experience and then he went back and he declared that, yeah, I'm, I'm getting the story a little bit right. I forgot one part. Then he declared that he wouldn't move until he gets enlightenment. He sat under the Bodhi tree and then he got enlightened just by declaring that you would sit until he said, even if I die, I will not move until I get enlightenment. So his intensity, his declaration was just off the chart. He was like, he was intense. He was authentic. He actually wanted it. 
in the same way that Swamiji went through all this tapas when he was a kid and he got the experience because he wanted it. He cut his thigh with a knife just because he wanted to test, I am beyond pain. He did not fully understand what it meant, but he was that intense that from whatever understanding he had, he went all out. I mean, who cuts his thigh just to test if you are beyond pain? I mean, you have to, you have to be intense. You have to actually want it and you have to dare to experience. I mean, there's a lot of fears that you will go through when you have your knife in your hand and you're about to stab your own thigh. Bro, there's a lot of fears and doubts and insecurities. So many things will just flood your inner space. But in front of all that, he was just like, screw that. I'm going to have the experience and I'm going to know what is the truth. And then he just cut with that clarity and that spiritual strength. He just went towards the experience. Of course, that was not the best decision. He shares that he could have just had the better understanding and the right context and he would have understood what the guru meant, but he didn't have it. But still, even though he didn't have it, he was all out. He was authentic. He was intense. He was sincere. So that's, that has to be kept in mind. People nowadays don't have that space. One of the reasons why Swamiji is not teaching most of the stuff which is there is because people, it's not, they're not going to implement it in their life. If you don't implement it in your life, then it's useless. See, the purpose is for you to get it. It's not just to show, oh, if you do great things, you will have enlightenment. If you're not great, well, you're not great. That's not the purpose. The purpose is for everybody to go towards that, not to discard the people because they are not willing to go to that extent or these people not to, you know, it's not, it's not about that. It's about making it happen for everybody because everybody is entitled for that experience. You are consciousness and you need to realize it if you want to go beyond suffering. So yeah, that's my response. So guru is important. If you don't have a guru which can fulfill your seeking, then perhaps you can go on your own. But I have never seen somebody meeting Swamiji and outperforming Swamiji. So as long as I don't see such a person, that path is not valuable nowadays. And Swamiji's experience is ultimate. And that is why he's so authentic. That's why he's expanding so quickly and so intensely because he has that experience. There's no way your seeking can be stronger than the space that Swamiji is carrying. It's not possible because he had the ultimate. He had the complete experience of Paramashiva. So going on your own kind of question, that's my take, uh, that's my understanding, that's how I got rid of this question. It's not possible. You need Guru. You need Guru. If, you're guru, if, the, if you are born at a time where there is no Guru available that can fulfill the, your seeking to reach the ultimate, your sincere, authentic seeking to reach the ultimate, maybe the path of being with yourself becomes a possibility. But in our time, that is not the case because Swamiji is here and what he's giving is huge. It's huge. There's no way your seeking will be more intense than what he's giving. So yes, so that shows, that proves that he's in the right space and that there's no reason why you would leave him unless you are incomplete, unless you have an incompletion with life, which you project on him and you decide not to complete that incompletion and actually you decide to discard him from your life. So that's my take on this question. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Myth Busting. I welcome you all with my love and respect. Let you all open all your three eyes.